Well, I think uh, it's 10 o'clock now. I think we'll get started. Um, so I want to say uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining Parker's Kelly Matheny and um, Chad Fire, uh, myself, for a live demo of Park, one of Parker's uh, useful online tools. Um, the uh, main topic for today is to demonstrate the H series ISO pneumatic valve manifold configurator. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, my name is Chad Beyer. I am uh, the product sales manager for Triad Technology. Um, a little bit about myself. I've uh, been in the pneumatic automation world for about 16 years of my career. Um, most of it was spent in the role of uh, applications engineer, uh, product engineer, and now currently, uh, as I said, uh, the product sales manager. Um, Um, I found, uh, as I was preparing for this, I found a funny quote, maybe a uh, little bit true in the business world. Uh, Douglas Adams, an uh, English author, once said, I love deadlines. I like the whooshing sound they make as they fly by. So, as I, uh, as I uh, can relate to this, uh, many of us have been in that position of a deadline that is approaching and the clock is ticking and often sometimes uh, trying to fit in that last piece into the uh, into the project. Coming from that personal experience, I've uh, come to appreciate the power of Parker's online tools that we uh, help, that can help you generate CAD, uh, product description sheets, schematics, building materials, and uh, specifically the H-series manifold, an all-in-one convenient location. So uh, let's get started. Um, I'd like to uh, provide a, a brief overview of Triad technology and a whole, and uh, my intention is to get through this quickly. So if anything catches your eye, please contact myself or Triad for any additional information as well. Um, so I think in uh, the key point to this slide is the uh, versatility of Triad um, with their, their ability to provide solutions. And I think the, uh, the um, main focus would be around uh, your, your hydraulic technologies, your pneumatic, your connectors, um, and your automation technologies. Uh, also uh, being able to supply uh, aluminum extrusion and also um, being a, a sick elite distributor. Uh, all of this is backed of course by uh, you know train our trained sales staff and uh, customer service representatives. The uh, brands that we cover um, mentioned a little bit earlier you know Parker motion uh, leader in motion control, sick another leader in sensors and industrial applications. And then that enter pack, uh, your high pressure tooling and so forth. This is the short list of our products, but uh, for the most part, those are uh, those are the guys we handle. Um, another another thing that uh, you know, Triad is just not a distributor. We have uh, several value add services that we bring to the table: uh, on-site plumbing, uh, troubleshooting, machine guarding. Um, we also do repairs for Parker Product, Interpac, Great Co. Um, one of the one of the things that I really think that we do well: uh, vendor management inventory. And uh, and I've done some analysis on the uh, on the uh, the savings that it, it, it saves the customer, and it, uh, it we do that very well. Um, another another uh, big thing that we do, and uh, it always surprises me as we walk into the uh, um, as we walk into the shop, I see a bunch of kits laying, you know, in, all over the place. We're we're constantly kitting up projects and so forth. So that is a uh, major thing that we can do, uh, labeling and, and packaging as well. Um, we are, we are supported by uh, you know. Several engineers. We have a whole department of engineers that are capable of creating design solutions with hydraulics, pneumatics. Um, you know, combining these products, 
um, creating the uh, full solution for the customer. Uh, and uh, the uh, you know main main mainly our headquarters uh, is in Vendalia. We uh, we are uh, currently under renovation. We are adding square footage to that facility, so um, it'll be it will be even much larger in capability of uh, some of our some of our capabilities. Uh, we have 21 locations of Parker stores throughout Ohio, which will service your immediate needs. Um, so those are uh, some of the big features that we have. Of course, ten million dollars in inventory. So, so uh, with that being said, um, I would like to thank you for my thank you for your time, and I'd uh, turn it over to Kelly for her introduction. Thank you, Chad. Um, so a little about myself. My name is Kelly Matheny. I'm the pneumatic territory manager for Northern Ohio. Um, I've been with Parker for about fifteen years, um, and I spent a uh, significant amount of the start of my career as an applications engineer for the pneumatic division. Um, after that, I moved into a field sales role where I've been for about the last nine years. My responsibilities as a territory manager include sales and technical support for customers and distributors across the northern half of the state. So during today's presentation, I do have everybody's microphones muted. Um, Chad will be running our chat window, so if you're new to Zoom, um, you will see that at the bottom of your screen, you should see an indicator where you can pop up a chat window. Um, and if you're experienced with Zoom, hopefully you already know um, how to find that on there. So I have Chad running our chat window, so at any time, if you do have questions, um, please go ahead and send your questions to the chat, and Chad will be uh, facilitating those there. Um, I will open the microphones at the end for questions um, after the end of the presentation. Um, just for now, like I said, send your questions to the chat. And then um, if something, if you need to um, send any messages, I do have the chat window open uh, for myself as well. Um, but like I said, Chad will be handling all of those questions through the presentation. So many of you are probably already familiar with Parker and some of the products and services that we provide. Um, but for those who aren't or maybe aren't aware of the um, expanse of Parker's capabilities, uh, here's a quick slide of Parker as a glance. Um, over 3,000 product lines, um, $14 billion in global revenue, uh, 450,000 customers worldwide, and over 56,000 team members across the globe. Um, we have a, an expansive global distribution network. We're in 50 countries, 1,000 markets. Uh, 290 manufacturing plants. And so a lot of us that are experienced working with Parker, um, you know, maybe it's in little segments or maybe it's just in automation. Um, but I think that this really gives you an idea of the capabilities that Parker has um, and highlights our ability to work around the world um, that sets us apart from our competition. So we are a global business um, with a local focus. Our company is headquartered in Cleveland, um, just southeast of town in Mayfield Heights. Uh, and so we are a Midwestern company that's um, like locally focused, but we are a global business. So we have operations all around the world. Our core technologies include climate control, hydraulic, filtration, fluid and gas handling, electromechanical, engineered materials, process control, and what I represent and what we're here to talk about today, which is pneumatics. So as far as the pneumatic division goes, we offer a full product portfolio of pneumatic products, including NFPA and ISO pneumatic cylinders, inline and ISO, mount, uh, ISO manifold mounted valves, modular air preparation, rotary actuators, and system solutions. The pneumatic division is headquartered in Richland, Michigan, so that's outside of Kalamazoo, and we have manufacturing facilities in Otsego, Michigan, Kittery, Maine, in Wadsworth, Ohio, as well as support facilities in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and an import location in Brownsville, Texas. Matt, Steve, and I, who you see here, all work very closely with Triad in Ohio, but Parker does have a team of dedicated pneumatic support specialists across the country. So in addition to your local distributor, we are here to support your pneumatic needs. So we'll make sure that we send this contact information out for you also at the conclusion of the presentation. Um, you can see that myself, I cover the northern half of the state. Matt Drakowski covers southwest Ohio, so Dayton and Cincinnati. 
And then Steve Semikowski uh, works in the Columbus area and also covers Pittsburgh. So we recognize that um, you know everybody here isn't necessarily only focusing their business in Ohio and things do happen where you need Parker support outside of the state. So like I said, we have a full product support specialist team that's out there um, that's willing and ready to help with your pneumatic needs across the country. So H-Series Universal uh, ISO Valve Manifold. So this is what we're here to talk about today. I'm gonna give you guys a brief introduction to the product, and then we're gonna spend a majority of the rest of our time doing a live demonstration of the e-configurator tool that helps you to configure valve manifolds. So for those who aren't familiar with ISO and what ISO standards mean, uh, ISO is the International Standards Organization, which essentially means that they crafted a set of rules that you have to follow to call your product an ISO valve. Uh, in valves, ISO standard identifies the interface between the valve and the base, which basically means that if you order a manufacturer's ISO valve and you try to replace another manufacturer's ISO valve, the interface between the valve and the manifold has to be the same. Uh, it allows products to be interchangeable between manufacturers, and it's something that really helps to give a customer flexibility in the products that they choose. So every pneumatic manufacturer makes an ISO, uh, or you essentially have to make an ISO valve to um, compete in a, uh, a valve product um, uh, family. So this is something that um, does allow a product to be interchangeable. There are also proprietary valves. So this is designed how a manu or however a manufacturer pleases. And they are used in the exact same application. So ISO versus proprietary, um, they'll work the same way. It's just a matter of whether the footprint has to be the same. So ISO means that the footprint has to be the same. Um, you will also see ISO cylinders um, that are out there. It essentially has uh, similar rules. It tells you what the dimensions of a cylinder has to be. Um, and it's the same international standards organization. So an ISO valve, the footprint has to be the same no matter what manufacturer you have. The next thing I wanna talk about is the two different types of valve that you'll see on a manifold like this, which are plug-in and non-plug-in. So plug-in cell valves allow the customer to make electrical connections via the end plate, and non-plug-in cell valves require the customer to make electrical connections to each individual valve. Um, one of the things that you see with the expansion of technologies like Ethernet IP and IO-Link is you find a lot more demand and requirement for plug-in valves. Um, and so a lot of what we'll do today when we do our configuration and our demo is going to be focused around plug-in valves instead of non-plug-in so that we can, um, you know, see all of the requirements that you need to pick before you can configure a valve. For the H universal valve design, uh, these are side ports only, and you can see here that the material is bare die cast aluminum. It is not painted, powder, powder coated, or anodized. So one of the really great features about the H series is that you can see here that on the H series universal, um, you can mount up to four different size valves all on one manifold. So instead of having to use transition plates or to use um, the largest valve for the smallest requirement and really sizing toward your largest application on a manifold, you're now able to mix and match and put all of these on one assembly. Um, what you don't see here, we also have a transition that allows you to go to our H3, which is the largest valve, um, but it does use, uh, that one does use a transition plate. So we do have the capability to mount um, essentially five different valve sizes all on one manifold. So here you can see we have a manifold that has 0.55 all the way up to a 3CV valve all on one assembly. And here's just a visual showing you what you can do. So instead of having to choose the, so you can see if you did this application, your 1500 pound application with your five inch four cylinder uses a rather large H2 valve. So instead of having to use that H2 valve to do your 50 pound one inch four cylinder application, you can now use different, uh, the, uh, different size valves all in one manifold to um, power these three very different applications. 
One of the things that's really nice about this as well is that we improved the ease of putting this together. So these have an interlocking manifold design. It has ease of assembly and align or ease of alignment in assembly and guided fasteners to make sure that these things uh, go together easily and quickly. Another new feature is that you can actually run multiple pressure zones all on one manifold. So this just shows that there is this little um, divider that has a tab that you can mark where the different pressure zones are. Um, but you can actually put this intermediate module where you see the P2 uh, to go in here and it says use the gasket kit with a supply and exhaust pilot closed. You can put these anywhere in the manifold creating zones of any size. So if you wanted to run vacuum to one section or you wanted to run just a different pressure or if your manifold is starved and you have two, like a large assembly that has a high air consumption requirement, you can actually put one of these intermediate air supply modules in to utilize when the valves are starved. Something else really nice that this does is if you need additional solenoids, you can actually uh, use the intermediate module as a, an electrical address extension, so you can allow for additional eight solenoids on your manifold. The H Universal uses all of the same H series valves that if you uh, have used in the past, um, those valves have not changed. So um, all of the accessories, the sandwich regulators, the flow controls, all of those things are compatible with the new H series universal valve manifold. Um, so these are all things that you can assemble to it and create a manifold um, configured and customized for your specific application. There are a number of support tools that are out there, so we're going to spend the next um, part of our time on the H-Series ISO landing page for Parker. And the way that you would navigate to this would be www.parker.com forward slash PDN forward slash H-Series ISO. And like I said, we will send out uh, to all of you the information on how to get to this website so that you don't necessarily have to write this down while we're going through. Um, but there is a lot of tools, so I'll show you guys here some of the tools and the resources that are available on this website. So, uh, like I said, if you have questions, please go ahead and send those to the chat window, um, and we will get into our H-Series Universal Configurator demo. So, I'm going to back out of our PowerPoint presentation and just go directly to our chat window. I'm sorry, to our uh, configurator. So this is the landing page for the, and I already had this loaded up just to make sure that we were ready to roll, um, but this is the landing page for the H-Series ISO Universal Manifold. Here in the product overview, uh, you can see the H-Series ISO valve uh, features and benefits. So you have your market, features and benefits, different applications and things like that that the H-Series can be used on. In the middle here, you'll see your tech specifications, um, the different ISO footprints that these meet, 559912, all of the different standards, um, number of manifold outlets, um, the, which essentially means solenoids, because um, when we talk about the number of uh, nodes or solenoids or whatever, it's always measured on solenoids and not valves. So it's 24 solenoids up to 32 with the electrical extension. Uh, port sizes that we have, uh, and so forth. And so here's a list of all of the um, performance characteristics. And then lastly is product support. So over on product support, you'll see all of the bulletins and all of the information that we have out here. So um, catalogs, the, there's an IO link brochure, network uh, connectivity, a lot of your installation sheets, all of these things that you might need in order to um, find more information, and be able to, you know, figure out what it is that you need for your manifold. So we're going to go back. So like I said, this is a, it's a wealth of information and I would highly recommend checking out what's here if you're looking for more information on the product family itself. So we're going to go back to this uh, configurator link. So pneumatic solenoid valve H series ISO, we're going to uh, hit configure. And I actually already have this window open so we don't have to wait for it to load. So from here, this is the window that you're going to land on. So here's our e-configurator. Uh, and if you've used a Parker e-configurator in the past, this should look familiar. Uh, if not, we'll walk through how to use this. So this is our H-Series e-configurator. 
Um, and over here on the right, you're going to see this list of specifications. So some of these we'll come back to. Uh, you have import, product view, CAD. Uh, this will reset everything to our home, uh, resave project, and then save as project. So the first choice we are going to have to make is whether we're going to do an add a fold assembled by the factory or unassembled with an end plate kit. Now for you, this selection won't matter. Um, for distributors, this does matter. So for triad, when triad configures a manifold, this matters. For you, this doesn't matter what choice you make. Um, all of the information that you're going to get is going to be the same. So we're gonna do add a fold. And basically what that means is that Parker is manufacturing a, a manifold uh, in our facility. The next choice we have to make is whether we're going to do a plug-in valve or a non-plug-in valve. So we're gonna say plug-in valve because it's gonna give us a lot of options for our um, uh, network connectivity uh, end plates. Next, we're gonna say whether we want as a standard the entire valve uh, manifold to be internal or external pilot. So we will choose internal here. And then we're gonna choose our left hand end plate. And this is where the choices start to get a little bit more expansive. Um, we're gonna, it, for our demonstration, it really doesn't matter, but here this shows you all of the options that we have. So we have IO link modules, Turk modules, all the different kinds of connectivity options that you might need are all in these options. So we're going to, just for this demonstration, choose the P2M network node. And then it's gonna ask you what protocol you want. So do you want Ethernet IP? Do you want Modbus, EtherCAT? Um, this is where you're gonna have to choose what it is that you want. So Ethernet IP is what I'll choose for this demonstration. And then port type. So we'll choose NPT because that's typically our standard here in the United States. Um, so these are all choices. So, and then what this does, the configurator is um, smart enough where it's not actually going to <clears throat> walk you into making a selection that's not compatible. And so here you see that we've walked down to the point where you would pick your voltage frequency. Um, and 24 volt is the only option because that is the only choice that you have for this network node that we had selected. Um, if there were additional options, it would give you that here where you could choose those. So label P uh, is just the, it's the Parker label. That's the only thing that you can have in this standard configurator. Um, as we go through this, you'll see maximum number of solenoids is 24 so that you can see um, how many you can put on here. And it'll update that note depending if you pick something that is, um, you know, maybe less than the 24 solenoids that you can have. So at this point, we've made all of our choices for our, um, main selection and now we're going to start picking our valve so the first thing we need to do is say okay so what is the first valve that we want to put on our manifold so let's say that we want to put um an h1 the next thing it's going to do is it's going to say okay well you've chosen an h1 now we need to configure our valve and it's going to take us into a separate window where we can select what options we want for this valve so we're going to say h1 valve Operator will just pick a double solenoid valve. And then, like I said, this is going to walk you through going through and picking your valve, but it's not going to let you pick a valve that isn't um, something that we can't manufacture. So it's going to walk you through the options that are available for what you've configured so far. So non locking, valve less base, the engineering level. And then, if you need a sandwich flow controller, any other accessories, that would be here. So we're gonna say base type, ISO uniform, uh, universal manifold. Um, it's gonna give you the double address, two zero double solenoid, um, and everything here is gonna walk through to what you need. So at this point, we've chosen our first cell, and we've picked our manifold base, and we're gonna hit add to assembly. So it's gonna think about it for a second, and it's gonna take us back to this main window, and it's gonna show you, here's all of the things that we picked first, and here is now our first station. Now for your next valve, you can do a couple of things. So if you have a separate valve, like if you have a different valve from your first station, you can go through here and you can select um, whatever it is that you need, or if you wanna put an intermediate supply module, 
um, whatever you want to do, you'll put here for your um, second station. The other really nice thing that you can do is you can actually, if you have a manifold that has all of the same valves through or even repeating valves, you don't have to go through and configure those repeatedly. So I'm going to show you how to copy one and then we're going to do a different valve for our next station. So the one thing that you do have to do is if regardless of whether you want to copy or start new or anything, you do have to select your valve size. So to copy our first segment, we're gonna say, okay, I want another H series or another H1 series valve here. Um, and then I'm gonna hit copy on segment one. And it's gonna say, where do you want it to go? And I'm gonna say segment two, hit copy segment. And you can see here that it has taken our configuration from the first uh, station and it's put it all the way in the second station. So we didn't have to reconfigure this. And you can do this as many times as you want to copy and paste your valve. Um, so the next thing we'll do is say, okay, well, I know H, uh, our third station is going to also be an H1, but now I want a sandwich regulator. And so we're going to hit configure. And we're going to say H1 valve, double solenoid. And then here it says when using your sandwich regulator, you have to hit external pilot. So we'll switch it to external pilot. We'll pick all of the rest of our options the same. And then it's going to give us an option now to choose a sandwich regulator. We're going to go in. We'll say we'll pick all of our options. 5 to 125 PSI with gauge, current level. We don't want a sandwich flow control. And here's our base. So you're gonna to continue to do this configuration, like I said, either copying your first, whatever station you want, or configuring a new station so that you can go in and you can create your manifold. So for our next station, I'm gonna choose another H1, and I'm just trying to keep this simple, um, but I'm gonna choose another H1, and then I'm gonna configure, I'm gonna copy our third segment into the fourth. I'm gonna say copy segment, And then it's pasted our fourth station uh, here and it's copied the third station. So like I said, you're gonna do this as many times as you need to uh, until you're done, but you do have to tell the system that you are done. So after you've selected all of your valves and configured everything, you're gonna say, okay, I'm done. Here's the end of my assembly. It's gonna give you some choices on your right-hand end plate. And for this, this is a pretty small assembly. Um, if you did have a large assembly and you wanted to put an inlet port on the end plate side, you could. But this is just a couple of valves. And so we're going to say low profile, no port. So at this point, we have a complete, uh, albeit short, manifold. Um, and I want to show you the different things now that we can do with some of these functions that are on the right hand side. So at any time, we could have hit save as project. I'm going to do that now, uh, and I'm going to show you what this does. So it says, do you want to save configuration as new project ID? And I'm going to say yes. And so this is our project ID. So what this means is that as you're going through and you're configuring your manifold, this gives you a way to save your progress. This is also something that you can, so let's say you're going through and you're configuring a manifold and you have questions about it, or you're not sure if this is, you know, these are the valves that you want, or maybe you want to send it to your triad representative or to your triad pneumatic specialist to see, um, you know, what they think, or if, you know, maybe if they, you want them to double check or anything like that. So this is something that is a work in progress for you. And I'm going to paste this down into our chat window just in case so we don't lose it. Um, but I did hit copy. You can also email this to yourself so that you can have it um, in your email so that you don't lose it. So I copied this number. Like I said, this is something that as you're going through and you're configuring these manifolds, you can save and resave um, over and over and over again on this project. So I'm going to hit close. And at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to reset my configurator. I'm going to get rid of everything and wipe it out. And then I'm going to show you what we can do with this project number. It's going to take a minute for it to, to wipe everything out, but it's basically taken me back to our homepage. So this is what we started with. 
the blank slate uh, and we would start configuring a new manifold. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit import. And if you have one of these project numbers, you can paste your project number here. It'll search for it. And once it finds it, uh, because it's a unique number, it will go through and it will paste all of the things that we have just done. So we didn't lose any of our work by hitting reset. So like I said, you can save and resave. So if I added, oh, so you know, maybe I say, oh, you know, I want more vowels on this manifold. I can undo this. I can do, um, I can change it to, uh, from end of assembly, I can add another valve instead. So I can say H1. I can copy in another station. So um, you know, we'll say H1. I'm gonna go through and I'll just copy just for, um, just to be simple, I'll copy our fourth station into segment five and do copy segment. And you can see that it's now pasted this and I can say resave, for, so we're actually, so here let me end the assembly first. Um, and I can say resave project. And it's going to say, do you want to save configuration as the same project ID? And you're going to say yes. So if you pick save as project, it would give you a new one. But you can hit resave project. It gives you the same number, which we'll double check in our chat window. Yep, it's the same. And this is going to be, so you can resave over and over and over again. And it, you don't have to change your project number. Now, uh, at any time, if you decide, hey, this is what I want, you can send this project number. So if you are ready for a quote, you can send your project number over to uh, Triad. You can send it to your distributor and they can take this project number and they will also be able to import this into the configurator and pull up all of the work that you've already done to select your valves. So none of this needs to be repeated and all of the work that you've done is saved. The other thing that you see here is create part number. And so what create part number does is it, uh, it obviously it, it creates a part number but it creates a number that you can use to order your manifold. So you cannot order a manifold with a project number. Um, we will always have to create a part number for you to order it. So at this point, we're gonna say, do you wanna save the part? If you know you're done, uh, this is the part number for your configured manifold. So this is the number that you would use to order. Again, this works the same way, and we'll put it into our chat window here. Um, this works the same way as the project numbers where you can go and you can, um, we'll reset again, and this is with our new manifold, we can import this project number, I'm sorry, this part number, and it will bring up all of the selections and all of the attributes that we have selected so far. I'm just waiting for it to reset. Maybe it didn't reset that time. All right, let's clear the selections that way. And here again, we're gonna select import. We're gonna do paste. It's gonna search and it's gonna look for your part number the exact same way. And so here are all the selections that we made and this is after our update. So we added our fifth station, but you can see that everything is here. Um, from there, there's a couple of things that you can do. So we can hit summary from this page and it's gonna take you to a printable summary of everything that you can that you uh, have configured so far. So you can see here all of the valves, all of the valve part numbers, the sandwich regulators, the bases, all of that is here along with the bill of material so you know exactly what you have selected during this configuration process. Um, this is something again, it's for your, your records, it'll have your part number. Um, at this point, the project number does still exist, but it's overwritten it with a part number just because that's what we've loaded in. Uh, if we load this project number and this part number, it will bring us the same information. It's just that you can only load by part number. And so you'll see everything that you've selected here. The other thing you can do here is this does have CAD available. So um, your configured manifold, you can go through and you can actually um, get CAD with this. So it'll pop up a 3D preview a 2D view and a download. And just for time's sake, um, I pre-downloaded a manifold. It'll be a little different than the one that we configured. Um, but all of this stuff is here. So when you hit CAD, you'll be able to select the um, type of CAD file that you want, 2D, 3D, uh, and you'll be able to download those from here. 
And then there's this really nice, so you can get schematics. And then there's also this really nice um, feature that's called a data sheet. And this is what I'm going to show you. I'm going to hit generate data sheet. And then I'm going to look at the one that I have pre-downloaded for you so you can see what it provides for you. So this is an interactive PDF uh, that has this interactive 3D graphic. You can grab this. Um, so this is uh, this is the same manifold except that it doesn't have that fit station on it. Um, and so you can grab this. You can rotate it. You'll see what this looks like. Here's our end plate. Um, you can zoom in on it if you'd like to. Um, and so this is just an interactive 3D graphic. And then if you scroll down, it will show you a lot of the same things that the summary had. So your part number of your assembled components, your valve, your sandwich regulator, and your base. And then the next page is just kind of a high level view of how big the manifold is. So it's going to give you overall package size dimensions. So it's going to show you how big this is going to be. Um, it's obviously not a substitute for your CAD model, but this is going to give you um, some of your overall sizes so that you can see, you know, exactly how big this manifold is going to be. And then here you can see, so this was a project number that I had created earlier. Um, and, the, and so you can see that the project number or whatever the part number is that you have um, is going to show up here. And then for price, it doesn't um, it doesn't have price, so it's going to say contact Parker. Or for you, um, I'm going to suggest that you contact Triad and provide the either the project number or the part number to them. And so that is everything that is included in the uh, interactive um, data sheet that you can get if you do say generate data sheet. And so you can see the reason I did that is it's thinking a lot and um, I wanted to make sure we had a data sheet ready to go because it is still configuring that. Um, so like I said, you'll just do select format, you'll hit download, and then your download window will pop up here so that you can download whatever file you need. Um, and then from there, that is, uh, that's essentially the capabilities of the H-Series Adifold uh, configurator with Universal Manifold. So um, I think that it's a useful tool. I think that this is something that can really help you to save time, especially with the copy and paste feature. Um, and really the feature of being able to share your manifold with either myself or Matt or Steve, who are my counterparts from Parker, or with Triad, your distributor. Um, this is something that really helps to you know, really increase the way that you can interact with your distributor on, um, you know, selecting these components. And really, I mean, this is something that even if you had a manifold, <clears throat> excuse me, if there's a manifold that you're, you know, maybe you need your triad representative to configure, they can configure and send this to you. And then you can also pull up some of the specifications. And it really helps to you know, increase that interaction between you and them and make sure that, um, you know, you're selecting the right components. Um, and <clears throat> and you're able to view the CAD and you're able to really, you know, dig in there and see what it is that you need and verify that the product is correct. So at this point, it's about 1040. Um, if there are any questions, I am going to uh, open it up for um, questions if you want to unmute. So if you use the dial-in to dial in, you will have to hit star six to unmute your line. And if you're using Zoom, uh, you should just be able to uh, unmute your line. I did allow it so that you could unmute your line if you choose to. Um, and so if you have any questions or anything, um, please feel free to unmute your line or to hit star six uh, to ask any questions. I'll give it a minute to see um, if there are any questions that pop up into the chat window. Okay, so, um, so there's no questions, it seems like. Um, if you do have any questions, comments, um, anything that you wanted to revisit from the presentation, um, like I said, we will be sending a follow-up note out to everybody who attended. Um, my contact information is here, and also Chad's contact information is here. Um, and if there are no questions, I want to thank everybody for your participation and your attendance today. I know everybody is really busy, um, and so we appreciate you spending time with us this morning. And we hope that this presentation has been useful and um, that you find this material beneficial. So 
Um, thank you again to everybody. Like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Um, otherwise, please enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, Kelly, thank, thank you on behalf of Triad for uh, putting the presentation on. And uh, as Kelly said, we're going to follow up with an email uh, to um, and, and a landing place for the a link for this particular presentation. So uh, thank you uh, very much, everybody, for joining.